five people at our board meetings because sometimes we're just speaking to two or three people who leave after they give their reports. So <laughs> kind of nice. Um, we are going to have our Pledge of Allegiance. I was wondering if Michael, you could lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please place your right hand over your heart. Pledge of Allegiance, ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Okay. I have a report of um, closed session actions. So, uh, with conference, with legal anticipated lit litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to paragraph two of subdivision D of government code, section 54956.9, one anticipated case in closed session, the Board of Education rejected the tort claim submitted on behalf of KR minor by a unanimous vote of four to zero. Um, and then we also have for a public employee di discipline dismissal or release in closed session by a vote of four to zero, the Board of Education took action to immediately suspend without pay and authorize the service of certificated dismissal charges on employee ID SM3223743. Uh, and I guess I should also report again, the board voted as follows, four I, zero no's and zero absent. And... You need to also adopt the agenda. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, could I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Good. Yes. Um, the Board of Ed Education in closed session voted as follows for I, zero, and nays to approve the following administrative appointment effective April 15, 2024. Gianni Polk, high school assistant principal assigned to North High School. Thank you. All right. Thank Ms. You. Polk, can I read your intro? It's a, yeah. it's a little, oh, yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no reason at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Johnny currently serves as a science program specialist with the Los Angeles County Office of Education, a role she has been in since 2019. During her tenure, she has been an advocate for the improvement of practices and policies to better the lives of underserved students. Previous to her current position, Gianni was a instructional science coach with opportunities for learning, a chemistry lead teacher with Hawthorne High School, a chemistry teacher with Marquis Mar Kez High School, a science teacher with Markham Middle School, and a resident teacher with Washington Prep High School. Gianni, am I saying your name correctly? Uh, yes, Gianni. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> Earned a bachelor's degree in biotechnology from California Polytechnic University Pomona and a master's in curriculum and instruction from California State University Dominguez Hills. We would like to welcome Gianni Polk to Torrance Unified School District. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was amazing. So uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you to our superintendent, Dr. Stowe, and to the board for entrusting me with North High School. And I got this cap to announce that I will be going there. So I appreciate everything, your time and your dedication. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, moving on to staff presentation information, item 8.1, we have a report by our student representative and recognition. We have our our final um, student board member for, for this quarter. Um, I don't know if Dr. Egan, you would like to do introduction or you can, and Michael, Michael C. Hero. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm Michael Suhiro. Um, I'm the representative from South High. Uh, I will be here for the next three or four board meetings following the end of the school year. And I will move forward with my report. Thank you members of the board, cabinet and public. I would first like to start by extending a warm welcome to my own very, and very successful South High Band. We're very happy to have you here at today's meeting. We hope that everyone has had a fun and relaxing spring break. TUSD students and staff were lucky enough to see a partial solar eclipse on the first day back. It was a fun experience seeing everybody watching the sun with their special safety glasses. The next total solar eclipse in the U.S. will be in August of 2044, so it'll be so it'll be a bit of a wait before we get to see it again. This past week, South and West have witnessed the first steps in the installation of their solar shade solar shade structures in the student parking lot. Now for our schools, starting with North. Prior to spring break, North High students 
had a field trip to the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab Laboratory. North High's softball team is currently placed number one in Pioneer League with wins versus Torrance, Lawndale, South, and West. Special congratulations to Reese Noah for being selected to the All-CIF Division I girls basketball team. North High's ASB elections will come to a close with voting closing tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. and the results be being announced on Wednesday. This week, they are celebrating Disability Awareness Week. Today, their ASB held a sensory guessing game. On Wednesday, a presentation will be held in their black box by Ethan Jimenez, speaking about his experience with visual impairment. And on Friday, students will play a charades game in the quad at lunch, all in efforts to bring awareness about various disabilities. North senior class finally announced their prom 2024 theme, which will be City of Stars, inspired by the movie La La Land. Prom tickets will go on sale next month starting May 8th. 2024 grad night tickets have also gone on sale. The last day to buy tickets is May 17th. Finally, congratulations to all the athletes who have committed to playing sports in college. Eliana Berruman to Harvey Mudd for D3 softball. Julieta Roa to Princeton University for D1 softball. Makena Chiatham, Chiatham, sorry, to University of Pacific for D1 softball. Nicole or Orozco to Portland State University for D1 softball. Priscilla Iniguez to Cal State Long Beach for D1 softball. And Anna Duarte to Montevallo University for D2 soccer. Then we have Torrance. To start, many rounds of congratulations to Torrance High students. First, Torrance High was able to host their National Singing Day, where seven student athletes, or sorry, National Signing Day, where seven student athletes were able to sign and show off their accomplishments at lunch. From golf, baseball, softball, and soccer, it was an awesome celebration. Next, we have Adrienne Gonzalez. She placed first in the PTA's reflection competition in dance choreography in the Southern California regional and state. Adrienne will now, com will now compete at na as a national finalist. In addition, on Saturday, Drill Team's small ja jazz competition team took home first place at not state championships. Overall, overall high school in the high school dance division and most spirited. Also, Maya Hernandez took home first place in high kicks and Kayla Sakurai won second in Drill, da in drill Down. And last but very not least, shout out to our Torrance High fashion and design teacher, Miss P, for being TUSD's 2023-24 Certificated Employee of the Year. Next, looking at student culture, Torrance High hosted their tradition of Spring Fest. Over 25 clubs participated from our amazing culture clubs serving food like tacos, onigiri, mango lassi, and more to our, to our crochet club selling bags and a feminist club for selling bracelets. ASB hosted karaoke, which many sec secretly talented students went up to sing. Torrance High is preparing their dance rally next month, and ASB has been holding, has been looking for dance choreographers. In addition, ASB applications just released, and in April, Torrance High looks for it electing a new board. On April 17th, Torrance is hosting their first ever dance show. The theme is Dancing Through the Decades and they will be selling tickets, $10 pre-sale and $15 at the door. Finally, coming right out of break, Torrance High hosted their eighth grade orientation. Eighth graders from Hull and Madrona came to visit and participate in a series of games while also getting to listen to some teachers speak on clubs, athletics, and academic opportunities. The best part was showcasing all of our Torrance High activities from dance team, drill team, cheer, drumline, and theater. Last but very not least, Torrance High experienced a new change this quarter as music, as music now fills their halls at the last minute passing period, reminding students to get their butts to class. Next up, West. Congratulations to the well-deserving qualifiers for their success in the National Invention Convention. It's always great to see representation from West High in prestigious programs such as these. Another huge shout out to CIF Southern Section Academic Athletes of the Year, Avery White and Micah Taw. But the list doesn't end there. We have another congratulations to Coach Belcher and the girls softball team for their success in the TNT softball tournament, which was the first time the team won the tournament championship. Speaking of exciting news, the prom theme was announced, Tangled. 
with tickets going up on sale until May 20th. Many are excited about this new addition. Partial closures took, took place on April 11th and 12th. Sorry. Last Saturday, West had a successful athletics pancake breakfast from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Athletes served pancakes, fruits, and, and other delectables as a fundraiser for all sports. It was fun to see all the sports come together in a bright Saturday morning supporting one another. On April 25th, students had the opportunity to attend a field trip to El Camino. The youth job fair will take place where, where apprenticeships, trades, work unions, and summer jobs will be present. Just to name a few, the United States Marine Corps, in and out and Inglewood Police will be present. A reminder to all seniors that the El Camino Honors Transfer Program application is open and due no later than April 19th. Also, LA Trade Tech, LA Trade Tech College is hosting a free three-week summer class to expose interested students to the construction injury in, industry. Those who compete, who does, those who complete the course will automatically earn hundred dollars. Lastly, Many speakers have been visiting, ranging from West High School alumni to those located outside the country to speak on their college application experience. And now, arguably for the best of them all, South. The South High Lip Dub is now on YouTube. Over 500 students from every club, class, and sport on campus sang their hearts out to over 80,000 viewers and counting. If you check it out, you'll be able to see some familiar faces. Last Monday, we hosted a percussion and color guard showcase featuring our own teams, as well as teams from North, West, and Torrance. Speaking of percussion, they attended the SCPA Open Class Prelims competition and placed fourth overall, which sent them to the championship round for the third year in a row on Saturday, where they placed fifth overall. Color guard also competed in the WGSAC WGASC circuit in high school A class, where they have placed second or third overall in their division for the past few years. Wind Ensemble had the competition winded. Where's the camera? <laughs> At the SCB, SCSBOA Walnut High School Festival, scoring an overall excellent, excellent at their first ever festival. The band has been busy as they're hosting their Spartan Sound Bites on the 24th, featuring brass ensembles, wind quintets, solos, and many more. On Wednesday, a display of some amazing student-made ceramics, paintings, and portraits were displayed for all to see at a night with the arts. Last Friday, South High's annual bluegrass took place, where eighth graders from Kaya Mayor and Richardson came on campus to get an early welcome to South High and an introduction to the many opportunities for involvements in our clubs and athletics, including our national championship dance team, who competed in 10 different divisions with 15 soloists. At the West Coast Elite Nationals, the dance team was named national champions in the large jazz division, which included all 23 members choreographed by, Ms. by teacher Miss Sasha Mendeville. Similarly, our national champion South High Drill team competed on March 23rd at USA Nationals and took first for their kick routine and second for their military routine. So them, sending them to the finals in the highest division. Something is going on at South where they get national recognition because two student groups from the invention convention are moving on to the national level competition. A lot is going on around campus this week. Red Cross is holding their annual blood drive on the 17th. The national champion dance team will be holding their all for nothing spring dance show running Wednesday through first, third, Friday. The CHOP challenge will also take place Wednesday through Friday where teachers will take where teachers with a student sous chef will prepare dishes in a competition that will be on display via monitors in the library. And the academic decathlon pentathlon, that's a tongue twister, will take place on Thursday. This won't be the first time Academ Academ has is bringing on the hardware. As the team went on to state and brought home 11 different medals in a variety of categories. Toward the end in April, South High will also host a spike ball tournament, talent show, scholar quiz, TED Ed student talks, and a Northern California college trip for current juniors. And finally, annual boat races will take place on May 3rd, where student built boats will be ridden by our very own staff members. We would also like to thank Arnold, Seaside, Riviera, and Walteria Elementary Schools, and Kai Mayor and Richardson Middle Schools for allowing us to visit and talk to their wonderful students. We will try our best to visit more more feeder schools as schedules open up. AP exams are coming up and students will be on the grind for the rest of the month. 
If you're not too busy, the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce is holding an essay competition for the 5K for Freedom. Cash prizes will be awarded to winning essays. Hopefully I didn't steal too much from Dr. Stone's thunder. <laughs> During my first meeting, I could take any questions you have. Any questions from the board? Welcome. Thank you so much Thank for you. your wonderful report. We look forward to your continued engagement through the meeting. Um, we are going to move on to 8.4, our superintendent's report. All right. Not too, not too much, Michael. <laughs> A little overlap. So uh, uh, just I'll, I'll begin by talking about some events that that we were all at, um, but uh, and and big turnout from the community. So the first one was the uh, first innovation festival. This is the Southern California Regional. So we've hosted the the TUSD events for the last few years, um, but this one was at El Camino uh, there uh, on March twenty third, and um, just a tremendous day. I mean, the people were there all day, uh, thanks to so many of our resource teachers, our, our TOSAs, and and uh, um other staff and, and administrators for for being there and supporting um that well, there were um you know thanks to premier sponsor uh Torrance refining company we had makers fair there were booths there were robotics competitions um and of course all the displays uh in one of the gymnasiums for our, our young scientists so um just a, a great event so thank you for everyone for the work putting that together when you have thousands of people in one place, it's never easy to manage, and there's always issues, but uh, everybody stepped up and, and made it a great day. <clears throat> um, so in conjunction with that was the Invention Convention, and, and as Michael mentioned, several of our students are moving on to nationals to go to Dearborn, Michigan at the, uh, the Ford Museum. Uh, we've got 32 uh, inventions total 46 students that are moving on a lot of individuals but then some teams uh this is very 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 exciting and um and the ed foundation Torrance education foundation is also one of the sponsors of this event and we thank them uh for their participation also want to plug the dinner coming up this friday i know pat fury wasn't here but um uh some of you might might do that too uh, but just you know, listening to the the names of these inventions and some of these ideas that that students have is is just heartwarming. Uh, you know, just think seeing the thinking that's happening and and one of my favorites was the quiet pickleball mm -hmm. because I don't play pickleball, but you know when it's being played. Um, but uh, but but yeah, just a, a lot of really neat things and just seeing the young inventors come through. Um, are, is is very exciting. Uh, also, at the end of March, I um, at, at my request, I had asked Donna Dupron with the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce to pull together a group of CEOs uh, from businesses in Torrance to uh, really listen to them. One to talk talk about what we do as a, as a school district and to solicit their employees to uh, bring their children to our schools if they're not already here. Um, but also to listen and and to hear from uh, the, this group of business leaders in the community, some of the things that they want uh, future workforce uh, skills to, to look like. And most of what I heard was soft skills that we can teach them content, but but the how to interact, how to work hard, how to persevere and 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 um, uh you know, have grit. I mean, those those were the kinds of things that, that that these leaders were saying. And so I talked to Donna Dupron today. She they she said they want to have continued conversation about this and how maybe we can work together on some some programs uh, that that might um, partner and bring uh, s some of our business leaders and 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 members of their organizations into our schools to to do more than what they're already doing. And so uh, we'll continue that conversation. But it was a, a great event um, and and want to thank Donna and the chamber for, for pulling that together. Uh, on the CIF side, athletics, um, do want to specifically recognize the uh, girls wrestling and softball programs at Torrance High School. They were the Southern California CIF Southern Section Team Academic Champions. Uh, each school got uh, individual boys and girls uh, uh, winners as well of this award, um, but think it's significant that uh, that that 
two teams that Torrance Iowa recognized out of uh, I think 27 teams in in the entire CIF Southern section. So um, congratulations to them, and they as well as the eight individual athletes uh, will be recognized at a, a Angels game coming up here uh, at the beginning of May. Uh, we had not sure what oh sixth annual. Uh, STEM Day over at Torrance Airport uh, right before spring break. It was a, a great event. Students got to sit in airplanes and and helicopters and learn a little bit about flight and uh, navigation. Uh, it's a special place for me because I grew up at Torrance Airport, and so it's always fun going back and seeing the excitement that uh, that students have when they when they get close to airplanes. Unfortunately, this year we didn't get the uh, the DC three or some of the the larger aircraft. Uh, to be able to be flown in uh, just for for timing purposes and and not enough pilots to fly them, but uh, but it was a, a a great day for students uh, that that were able to make it over. Most of the students that that went were part of our project lead the way program, either at the high school or the middle school. So thanks to the teachers that that facilitated that. Um, <clears throat> North High School, as many of the schools do, uh, have multicultural events. Uh, North had their Big week, uh, March 22nd, and uh, daytime assemblies, evening assemblies, um, you know, other other kinds of, uh, you know, not just performances, but really a showcase uh, throughout the week the diversity that North High has and and uh, uh, annual celebration that I know that community really looks forward to and 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 celebrates and enjoys to to bring people in to allow students to share their heritage and their culture um, and and. Um, share that with with other students and, and families. We also attended uh, the Visions of Unity Awards. This is through the um, the the Human Relations. It started with the LA County Commission on Human Relations. I forget if they're still sponsored or if it's just the Human Relations Forum of Torrance uh, that that is is uh, the sponsor of this event. Uh, but the this it's really rep, it's an art contest for high school students in Torrance to to allow them to to um, showcase not just their skills in literature and art but to tell a story about unity and and diversity and the importance of that in our community and so uh, students had the opportunity to read some of the things that they wrote to talk about the the images or or uh, photos that they they um, created and so. Uh, that was a, a nice event. Nice to be back at the the Torrance Memorial Medical Center again, and in, in their beautiful facility. So thanks for um, to them for allowing us to be there. Uh, also, our high schools are having their arts uh, events. Uh, last week, uh, South High hosted their night with the arts, and uh, North High had their celebration of arts on Friday. And so uh, again, just more opportunities for our students, whether it's ceramics or 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 drawing or art uh, in different different formats to be able to um, to share with with each other. And then finally, I um, want to, this is maybe the first or second time you've heard this. Um, we're going to push this out in lots of different ways between now and April 29th, but we're doing a district-wide test of our uh, text, uh, emergency text system. And so uh, it'll occur on April 29th in conjunction with um, with with a drill that we're we're doing uh, working with Torrance Fire, Torrance PD, City of Torrance, uh, and and our own internal systems. Uh, so we will be sending an email out to all families and and uh, staff, and we'll be texting as well. Uh, and again, it's a it's a drill. It's an opportunity for us to to learn uh, in a in a low stakes environment where gaps may exist. Uh, and where we will see successes in terms of communication during uh, uh, emergencies. So uh, that will be pushed out several times uh, by Sarah Myers in the communication department. So with that, I thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? No. All right. Awesome. Um, we're going to move on to 8.5 initial proposals between the Torrance Unified School District and California School Employees Association, Chapter 845 for 2024 to 2025. Um, should we just move to adopt or do we do we want to? Oh, would you like to? Or oh, yes, sorry. Good evening, Ms. Ms. Park. Hernandez. Thank you. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Good evening, President Park, uh, Superintendent Dr. Stowe, Board of Trustees, Community and Staff. 
I'll briefly uh, go over the proposals uh, or initial proposals for negotiation. Uh, district proposal to CSCA Chapter 845 um, is compensation evaluation. Uh, clarify language around timing of evaluations, moving it annually as opposed to the anniversary dates. Uh, leaves, clarifying language around uh, reasons for granting leaves of absence, uh, aligning the language to uh, language that's currently enjoyed by Local 99 uh, Collective Bargaining Agreement. Uh, in calendar, clean up language regarding behavior analysts uh, work here. Uh, CSEA Chapter 845 proposal to the school district. Uh, union release time, uh, request for union reps at the sites uh, to have one day of training per year. Uh, the calendar uh, to work on the annual calendar uh, work year calendars. Uh, compensation to revise benchmark positions for future compensation studies. Uh, stipends for those who work at multiple sites. Reimbursement for damaged employee property at no fault of the employee. Uh, Health care benefits, access to the affordable and high quality health care. Attendance and state disability insurance benefits. Uh, re relocate language of SDI, uh, vacation accrual incentive for perfect attendance. Clarify regarding coordinator of SDI benefits and contractual leaves, uh, restructure leave section for readability. Also, there is a request for transfer language to improve transfer process and also the length of the agreement. Uh, these are the initial proposals for. Uh, the district, as well as CSCA Chapter 845 to commence negotiations. Are there any questions? Any questions? Could I take a motion to uh, adopt the... Oh, so, okay, sorry. Yeah. Gotcha, great. Okay, so then we'll move on to 8.6. Sure, very similar initial proposals between the Torrance Unified School District and California School Employees Association, Chapter 19, for 2024-25. Thank you, yes. Uh, district proposal to CSCA, Chapter 19. Uh, compensation, uh, evaluation, clarify language around the timing of evaluations. Um, three, uh, vacation uh, balances, clarify language around maximum accrual of vacation balances and leave clarify language around reasons for granting leave um, absences without pay. And again, similarly to um, Local 99, aligning the language to uh, to those leaves. Uh, CSCA 19 proposal to the district address calendar, uh, update definition section to align with previous negotiations, hours of employment, establish alternative work schedule uh, per ed code, 45132 compensation revised benchmark positions for future compensation studies uh, greater uh, parity with other bargaining units uh, professional growth accountability for classified professional growth incentive program uh, reimbursement reimbursement for damaged employee property that's no fault of the employee health care access to affordable and high quality health care and also the contractual agreement to be extended between 27 and 124 to 630 2027. Uh, these are the initial proposals between the district and chapter 19 CSEA. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Best of luck with, with the continued engagement. Um, next, we're going to move on to, to nine oral communication for our unscheduled hearings on non agenda items. And point one, the Board of Education welcomes input from the public. Speakers wishing to address the board on non-agenda topics have completed the appropriate submission form on the district website or in-person speaker card. Time allotted for public comments on non-agenda items is limited to three minutes per comment and for a total of 30 minutes. A speaker may not relinquish his or her time to another. Um, do we have any speakers online? No. Okay, great. So we're going to start with um, Lisa Hamilton. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is just to represent, it's not just me that feels this way. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, school board and cabinet members. My name is Lisa Hamilton, and I've been a teacher here in Torrance for 28 years. 
I'm here to talk to you again about the plight of the elementary classroom. The classroom environment has slowly eroded and student misbehavior issues have gradually escalated. I've witnessed students show tremendous signs of anxiety by pulling their hair out, hitting themselves, destroying property, crying, growling, digesting non-food items, and now they're beginning to harm others. I blame this on three factors. One, class size being too high, two, common core standards being too hard, and three, special day classes being transformed into the learning center, those students being placed in the general ed classroom with little to no support. When class sizes are too high, one teacher without an aid cannot meet the needs of all of their students. Students are acting out because they are overwhelmed with the academic expectations and they don't have enough adult support. Special education is also impacting the general education classrooms. Our current testing system is not identifying students who used to qualify for learning disabilities, and those who actually do qualify are not being given paraeducators they deserve and need, and need when being mainstreamed. This is leaving the one general education teacher as the only supportive adult in the room, and it's not enough. We need to stop lying to the public and calling the general ed classroom the least restrictive environment because in actuality, it is the most restrictive for everyone. We need to find a solution for this. I know it all boils down to money, so how about we think outside the box for a minute and instead of spending money on programs like Solution Tree and iReady, we create a class size reduction program for the elementary levels. I taught in a classroom with a 20 to 1 ratio for several years, and a class like that, a teacher is able to work with small groups with each student every single day, and behavior improves because students get the support they desperately need. Currently, TK is at a ratio of 12 to 1. The very next year, those same children are expected to function in a kindergarten classroom of 27 students and one teacher. Perhaps instead, we could have a kindergarten class of 16 and each year go up by two numbers, maybe have a tiered system, and consider having an aid for classes that go over the, the number 20 to support our students. I know it's a big ask to request doing away with data gathering programs when we're trying to encourage attendance growth with our dashboard data, but I believe parents would want to start their child's education in Torrance even more if they knew their child was going to be in a significantly smaller class size. I believe this escalation of students' behavior is a cry for help, and I beseech you to be the first district first district to significantly reduce class size at the elementary level and give the students the support they desperately need. Thank you very much for your time. That's perfect timing. Yeah, perfect. The three minutes, yeah. Um, next we have Kristen, is it Junge? Junge? Youngie. Youngie. Oh, no. So, so off. That's okay. <laughs> My whole life. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and how many times a day at the beginning of a school year? <clears throat> My name is Kristen Youngie. I'm a third and fourth grade teacher at Lincoln Elementary. This is my eighth year teaching here, but I'm also a proud alumni of Lincoln. I was also a dance teacher with Parks and Recs here in Torrance for 15 years before getting my credential. I've worked with and taught over 4,000 students here in Torrance. Currently, I live just outside the city, but Torrance is my home. I know we can all agree that teachers deserve higher salaries, but rather than discuss that, I want to discuss the ineffective use of funds that impact teacher retention and the actual benefits for both students and teachers. <clears throat> Our teacher contract limits us to 27 students at the elementary level, but unfortunately that 27 to 1 also ends up being held up over our heads to decide staffing at school sites, which means every year around this time, the entire staff starts to be concerned about our enrollment numbers, whether we get to keep our staff, and how many combination classes we will be required to have in the next school year. Hoping that we get just the right number of incoming kinders to fill our classes and help meet the enrollment needs and our staffing, but also hoping that we don't get those extra three students that kick us up into that K-1 combo and potentially trigger more combos up the grade levels. We all know that one way to help our students is smaller class sizes, but rather than allow those few classes to be a little smaller, we're forced to have full and combination classes. While qualified and wonderful teachers are being paid to chase and spin data in the RTI and I positions, what we really need in our classrooms are instructional aids and less students, especially at the primary level. Even the shared aid within a grade level or two, the additional time spent reading with students or working with math problems would be so valuable to our students and a bit of weight off our teachers' shoulders. I was lucky enough last year that my class had more fourth graders than third graders, so I did get to work with an instructional aid. 
And when I tell you that there was straight up double the amount of literacy happening in my classroom versus this year's combination class, I'm being honest, double. Because I could leave one group in capable hands reading to kids while I was also reading with another group. And while I'm so immensely grateful for that experience, I cannot imagine how my colleagues are expected to do and are doing that work in a K-1 combo. But instead of allowing for these smaller class sizes or instructional aids in classrooms, the district is paying for these programs that don't meet the needs of a majority of our students, programs such as iReady, and are paying these RTI folks who are fabulous to chase their tails collecting data, reporting quantitative data that does not make any significant impact on students, as so much of the art of teaching relies on qualitative data, if not more importantly than quantitative. 20% of my students don't meet the end of the year standard. That's an interesting piece of information. But what's so much more inter interesting is who are those five students who didn't meet the standard? What's happening for, for them at home during testing? Is it undiagnosed learning disabilities? Is it medical concerns that are di diverting their attention away from their education? And instead of helping these students overcome obstacles like these, like an instructional aid or smaller class sizes, or even further de dedicated intervention teachers could, our RTI team reminds us that they didn't meet the goal. Before becoming a full-time teacher, I worked in accounting. It's a big part of why seeing the redundancies and poor spending to the detriment of our students and teachers is so disheartening, when all I want is to love working from my home community. I want to feel as though our district has the best interests of our teachers and students at the center of this decision. Thank you. Yeah. Next, we have James Henry. I'm glad you're accepting the yellow cards and the and sequence of importance. My name is James Henry, a North Torrance High School graduate, class of 1969, a North Torrance homeowner since 1976. That being said, the North Torrance Girls Softball League season started Saturday on February 17, 2024. An overflow crowd of supporters and admirers showed up for the festivities. We are a family. Come to the games which are played on the Hamilton Adult School girls softball fields, 2606 West 182nd Street in North Torrance. One last thing. Repair the Hamilton Adult School parking lot. It is in bad need of repair and is a safety hazard of which the Torrance Unified School District is liable. Okay, next we have Joshua Huehue, I think, from um, Train Children Chess Academy. Uh, Joshua Hui Hui from Train Children Chess Academy. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak um, to you guys this evening. Um, I have an after school chess program and I am an approved uh, vendor uh, with uh, the Torrance School District. Uh, just a little about myself I grew up in Torrance. Um, I went to Magruder Middle School, graduated from North High School. Um, I've been teaching chess uh, to kids for about 17 years now in Torrance and I found my passion to work with children. Uh, the first day I started teaching chess, um, I was working for a chess company called Academic Chess for about 15 years until the pandemic. And obviously, we all lost our jobs. Um, then in June of 2022, um, I decided to step out in faith and pursue my dream and start my own chess business. Um, in just a year and a half, uh, we've had thousands of enrollments and um, many jobs created. I went from uh, members, uh, four staff members to 16. And what's unique is over 80% of my staff are minorities. Half my staff live in Torrance and rely on this uh, job as a supplemental income for their livelihood. And we've spent thousands of dollars in Torrance uh, towards business expense and also facilities use. Uh, I rented the Ken Miller Auditorium last summer to rent out um, that place for an awesome chess tournament with the kids. And I give all credit to God. I couldn't do this without him. Um, I'm here to address a big concern um, that may seem like a small matter, but it has had and is having a big negative impact on our program's outreach to the families due to the strict policy on no paper flyer distribution. 
uh, not just with my program, but other programs also. Um, in the 17 years of teaching chess, I've seen uh, the tremendous benefits um, it has had on children. And our program is literally uh, changing the lives of children. And so transitioning over to Peach Jar, um, it has had a drastic decrease in signups due to the extremely low views and open rate um, of the flyers. I've sent most of you the paper flyers versus e-flyers graph. And if you need any further documentation for proof, I can email that to you. Um, the difference is staggering. And um, although the parents are encouraged to check their emails, it, uh, most of them are not doing it. So um, while we do believe in a balanced approach, uh, uh, for doing digital distribution, we know that's good. However, flyers placed in the hands of a child or parent uh, with your approval ensure 100% student exposure. Um, and we're open to a solution to help both of us. Uh, we are chess players, so you know we can think of something. Um, if it's for environmental awareness, I mean, we can print recycled biodegradable paper, um, or we can send out half-page flyers instead of full-page flyers. You know, so but going 100% uh, digital through Peach Jar will limit the exposure of our enrichment program, cut jobs and affect lives. That's 100% fact. I know it through data. So um, yeah, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Yeah. What our flyers look like. Next we have Campbell Gassak. Hello and thank you to the 2SD board for allowing me to speak this evening. I'm Campbell Guzak, a freshman and a member of the South High School Band. I wanted to speak on behalf of the arts and music funding as it relates to Prop 28. Being a part of the South High School Band program is a truly unique and un remarkable experience. As you may know, we are 100% parent and family funded, calling for high fair share and fundraising fees. Families are highly encouraged to pay so the band as a whole can participate in various events and accomplish the things we do. With the aid of the Board of Education and the proper allocation of funds from Prop 28, it can relieve the financial burden off of, family, of students and their families and allow for the future success of our program. These costs add up and the lack of funding is a real barrier to join this program, amazing program. Mine and others' concern is the program will decline or slowly diminish unless a solution is provided. As a member of the program, there are endless and unmatched benefits. Although I've only been with the band for a season, it has given me an unexpected sense of community and has allowed me to further enhance and further develop my leadership and work ethic, which will build a pathway for my future. I want to talk about a few things that the program has afforded me and has afforded many others. Community. Going into high school is a big step and the change is immense. However, my fellow bandmates were a big part of my growth and eased the anxiety of this change. I know I'm not alone in feeling this. Kids can often, kids often struggle in high school, but having a support system helps in programs like arts and music provides purpose and passion. The countless hours of practice, the competitions, and the discipline required has built the kind of bond that I know will continue throughout my high school career and beyond. Opportunities, leadership. There is no one leader in band. We all have the opportunity to lead throughout with various roles and positions. From drum major to head of publicity, there's, those are just a few roles that go beyond music. Imagine what it takes to command and direct a field of 120 students to put on a state championship worthy performance, or what it takes to influence and create interest for the next generation of musicians. These roles teach us not only confidence and leadership qualities, but they also offer career and life skills. What the band program has done for me in only a matter of months is something that myself and many others will carry with them for the rest of their lives. Crucial skills, amazing memories, and experiences we'll never forget. So by allocating the funds from Prop 28 to invest in existing programs, you'll be able to influence the future of not only our generation, but for many more to come. Thank you. Yeah. Next, we have Ashley Park. Uh, 
Uh, hello, my name is Ashley. I'm currently a senior and the clarinet co-section leader of South High's Marching Band and Color Guard. I'd like to start by expressing my gratitude towards TSD's music programs. I entered Torrance Twins District during my eighth grade year, living outside of America, so I knew very little about the culture and school system. But I did music before and I chose band, which became the best decision I made. I met other freshmen who were as scared as I was. Older students offered advice and teaching staff who helped me develop to become a stronger musician. This environment allowed me to grow as a leader. I was able to uh, adjust to my life in America. The strong community of South High's marching band became a robust foundation for me to grow. And if there's someone I could uh, describe exactly about this, it would also be my brother. I saw his musical journey from the start, watching the tiny, determined sixth grader lug his heavy instrument home from school every day and listening to his loud practice sessions, which also greatly annoyed me uh, during the hot summers as he would close the windows, but I could see his determination. And as he entered high school, I would witness how he navigates marching band, his first steps learning how to march to his first football game, from the emotion of competition, anxiety to exhilaration, from the nervous freshman to the next year's assistant drum major, I saw him foster relationships with new people, communicate with others, problem solve, and gain confidence. He made mistakes along the way, but he learned to fix them and move on. He learned to take initiative, learn to come out of his comfort zone, and strive to become the best version of himself for his community. This experience is why I value marching band so much. It's a safe environment to develop with ample opportunities. This high school level music program bolsters students who want to take more initiative and strive higher. Yet a music program with such size requires the generous support of parents, coaches, teachers, and money. Financial support is essential for every season, keeping this community alive. We need uh, money for props, instruments, music, buses. We need money to feed over 100 students during competition and transport all our equipment, as well as uh, pay coaching staff to teach the vast number of students. As an older sibling, as a section leader, I truly hope there is no student that contemplates joining this community because of their financial strains. So as I leave for college next year, I hope this program continues to thrive for my brother, for my other younger band siblings, and countless other prospective students. I hope that they are able to participate in band as students without any encumbrance, continuing to attend competitions and showcasing all their hard work, and most importantly, develop important life skills that I once have that will be vital for their future. So I hope Prop uh, 28 will supplement marching band programs and their creativities. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Sophie Kong. Good evening. Thank you for allowing us to speak tonight. My name is Sophie Kong. I'm currently a junior at South High. This is going to be my third year in the South High Band Program. I'm going to be the band president in this upcoming year, and I can confidently say to all of you in this room that I would not be standing in front of you today if I had not been a part of band. The arts program at South High has allowed me to transform from a pretty shy, timid freshman to a junior who voluntarily came to speak to everyone today. <laughs> Through band, I have, like so many people have said before me, I've met a community, a community that, ha that has allowed me to grow out of my shell, make mistakes, and expose me to the wide variety of programs that TUSD has to offer. Thanks to the people I've met, even the people who are standing here with me today, I've been able to learn about the STEM program at South High, such as our robotics program, such as our marine science program, such as our science club, through which I've joined Science Olympiad. I've been able to put out feelers into all of these amazing networks, and I have even joined some leadership because of this program. I've done sports games and all of this stuff wouldn't have been possible without the community I have met through this program. And as, as we have said, this program of over 120 people, unfortunately costs a lot of money to maintain and to even grow and outreach to throughout the years. From the coaches to the equipment, to the music, we even like the music we play, all of that requires funding that is 100% done by our students and our parents and all of our supporters. Um, my experience of finding a community and learning how to reach out isn't unique to me. There are studies that have shown that arts programs greatly benefit students through 
both improving their overall academic performance to their social emotional health to a plethora of other benefits. Um, but band members pay almost $1,000 a year to cover all the fees, coaching, transportation, music, food, and more. To cover this, we do a lot of fundraising, but sometimes it isn't enough. I hope that the money from Prop 28 will we'll be able to have a say in this discussion and to be able to know what is the money going to go to and how will it benefit the students, the people we are here to help and support, how will it benefit this community of young learners who are just trying to outreach more. So just to conclude, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak tonight. Please thank and also thank you for your consideration. Justin, I I can't pronounce your last name. I'm so sorry. I can't read it. <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi, my name is Justin Cow. I'm a junior at South High School, and I've been involved. I've been involved with the band for all the years I've spent in high school. What's so great about our band program is the numerous opportunities and skills that it offers for us to improve upon. Our band has always been really hands-on during the marching band season, giving students opportunities to convey their artistic skills on props, leadership skills at events, and being leaders of instrument sections. For me, I've chosen to support the band of leadership by applying for the role of drum major. While I'm still an assistant in the upcoming 24 to 25 year, I'll fulfill the, the role of drum major, which is to lead the group of 120 students in the band and conduct on the podium throughout the whole marching band show. Looking back, this is a role I definitely wouldn't have imagined myself in now. I'm extremely grateful for the tight-knit community that the band offers and the friends that support me. It's because of the band program that I've changed from a quiet, undetermined freshman to a very present member of the band and inspired to contribute to the local music scene by being an original member of the South Bay Wind Ensemble, a six-year member of the Palsbury Symphonic Band, and starting um, starting brass ensembles between South and West High, personally. It's also because of our wonderful band director, Miss Brock, alongside with our coaching team from highly experienced backgrounds that bring me here to say that I wish to see support for our band program. Over each summer, I've... I've worked over every summer to make sure I can pay my fair share donation of about $1,000. And it pains me to know that others and even others less fortunate have to carry the same burden to be a member of the arts. Despite this, our band program has been extremely successful in the past with first places in all of Southern California in 2011 and 2013 in the SCGA circuit. While we've, we've maintained to stay near the upper ranks as a distinguished band of the 5A and 6A divisions, as a result and the lack of support that comes from uh, following COVID-19 and leaving with our outstanding alumni. I've come to speak in hopes to express my dream to keep the band program bright, and I wish to be involved in the discussion of the funding of Prop 28 to our band program. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Anne. All right, next we have Gloria Gutierrez. Uh, Gloria, she's coming. Oh, awesome. I have a little bit put together here. Hello, my name is Gloria Gutierrez. I'm the president of the League of Women Voters of Torrance area. And I'm here to bring awareness to an event we're hosting for Earth Day this Saturday. Uh, we're doing an environmental teach-in at El Camino College, um, where we will have um, speakers and the topics of advocacy, green education and careers, and green sectors, all uh, having to do with climate change. Um, 
Our co-sponsors include the South Coast Interfaith Council, Torrance Refinery Action Alliance, Citizens Climate Lobby for South Bay, the Climate Reality Project for Los Angeles, and the Sierra Club Angeles Chapter. And we've also co-sponsoring with El Camino College's Architecture and Design at Getting to Zero exhibit, which is an art exhibit starting at 2 p.m. that day at El Camino. We're going to have free food. We're going to have prizes. It is free to park. And it's this Saturday. Uh, one of the first speakers we'll have is from the South Bay City Council of Governments. Uh, one of the Sparks Fellows will talk about the current inventory of greenhouse gas emissions they're doing for here in the South Bay, David Hines. We'll also be talking about local laws that have recently passed, as well as uh, future changes happening locally, like the organics recycling law, as well as the installation of the Metro Sea Line. Um, our green sectors are going to include areas like construction and design, agriculture and water. So we're really hoping that we can get a lot of students to come, high school students and college students, because we've really put together a fantastic program and we want to make sure that they have lots of eyes on them. Um, we'll also be a climate solution marketplace, so there'll be plenty of booths there for students to go around and find out where they could be volunteering, where they might sign up to get more information, you know, what advocacy looks like, including um, uh, an individual there who's going to be teaching on how to make zines, uh, as well as a climate cool down game. As to the League of Women Voters, we are a 104-year-old organization. We are nonpartisan. We're not for or against any party or candidate, but we are a political organization. And so we hope you'll also consider joining as a member. We are co-ed. Uh, so thank you so much for listening. And again, it's this Saturday uh, at El Camino College. It's free from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I, I, to the note about the flyers, I, I do also find... It hasn't seemed like the online fire flyers have been as effective in getting the word out. So that's why I'm here talking with you tonight. So please, if you are interested, I'll have the flyer over there so you can use the QR code to sign up and we hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we're going to be moving on to our discussion action items. So if there are folks who um, need to get homework done or study for exams or eat dinner, please feel free to slip out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We all we always love to um, hear from from our students, um, and I, I'm sorry that we can't respond to to the comments. But hopefully, things will through other channels um, be able to be clarified and um, and such. Okay. So next, I'm going to move on to 10.1. Speakers wishing to address the board on agenda topics have completed the appropriate submission form on the district website or in-person speak card. Time allotted for public comments on agenda items is limited to three minutes per comment. Time allotted for each agenda item is 10 minutes per topic. A speaker may not relinquish his or her time to another. And I've learned from last time, we're going to wait for this um, and until we get to the consent agenda. Um, and then next, we have 10.2 process of filing a board or no filling filling a board vacancy dr stowe yes good evening board members um well last tuesday night dr gerson uh, tendered his resignation uh to you miss park uh prior to him being uh sworn in as member of the city council you can't have two elected positions in the same town uh so that creates a vacancy on the board and so um, thanks to to my assistant Shelley Morse, uh, the the two of I uh, two of us have spent quite a bit of time over the last uh, month or so anticipating that this could be a potential and want to bring to you the options that you have as a board in filling the vacant seat. So you have two options. Uh, we we've also been working with the LA County um, Office of Education. Uh, they were asking quite frequently uh, as of late when you getting this letter from uh, Dr. Gerson uh, because the election had been certified, but, uh, but, but here we go. So, um, so two options. One is the board can make a provisional appointment and that appointment would last only until the uh, December board meeting of this year. Uh, the, um, 
the the vacancy so dr gerson's term runs through 2026 um, but your provisional appointment would only go seven months until the next election in november for which um, the position would be uh, elected for the remainder of his term which is two years so uh, your provisional appointment would again not be for the entire remaining uh, time of of the term uh, just until the next election um, or you could do nothing and uh, we could pretend you know after 60 days uh, with not acting on this vacancy uh, the LA County uh, Superintendent of Schools could order an election, and a standalone standalone election, uh, as uh, we've received an estimate from the county, uh, could run upwards of six hundred thousand um, dollars. So, I hope <laughs> you make a choice in Dr. Butler's uh, in concurrence with not spending that kind of money. But let's move forward. So um, again, if, if no action. So this election would be for, or this appointment uh, would be for trustee area E, uh, which is kind of central Southwest uh, areas. And so um, the, the, although we'll, we'll communicate district wide uh, about this, uh, the vacancy, uh, the, the individual that would uh, be considered for appointment um, would need to reside within uh, trustee area E on this map. So your provisional appointment, should you choose to uh, move this direction? Again, need to act within 60 days of the vacancy. Um, since since Dr. Gerson submitted his uh, resignation uh, late in the day on the 9th, uh, the, the letter we received from the county today um, stated that the day one was uh, April 10th. So we have from then until uh, June 10th to make a decision. Uh, so our process would be to advertise in local media. Uh, what's required is you uh, post in one location. So our typical location is the uh, Daily Breeze where we would advertise uh, again and communicate it out to the community. Uh, the uh, I do need tonight a uh, name of two board members that are willing to be part of a board committee. Uh, to ensure applicant eligibility, we'll we'll run everything and and get everything ready. Um, but we do need two two members to review the applicants and 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 uh, certify their eligibility. Uh, and um, then we would list eligible candidates on an agenda, uh, at which time then the board could uh, would interview and make a public appointment. And this would, um, uh, well, we'll get to the timing later. Uh, so at, at that public board meeting, the board could accept written or oral input, just as we do in regular meetings. Uh, your pr provisional appointee would be selected by a majority vote, so uh, three individuals uh, minimum, and then um, they would remain in office until the December board meeting, and the election would be for uh, November for the remaining two-year term. So that would be a, a special election. That that so on the agenda later tonight in consent, uh, there are two resolutions. One is for, and this is when we typically do it anyway for the the open seats. Uh, so we would be have two four year terms as part of our regular election, and then a special election consolidated at the same time uh, would be for the the two year uh, vacancy. So I know we're voting on the resolutions for the, in the consent agenda. Do you want us to have two members for the board committee before we get to that? Or yeah, so part of part of this item would just be amongst yourselves decide which two would work with uh, myself and Shelley on um, on just reviewing the applications, make sure uh, again just verifying that that our information that we provide you, and then you'd bring forward those uh, to the board. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any questions, comments, or volunteers for the board committee? I have a question. Oh. Okay. Um, so after the committee reviews the applications, um, you mentioned we're going to interview them in open session. Yeah, so let me go through this last slide oh, uh, because that, that 
we added this today. Mm-hmm. Um, so just with with all of the dates, so that that you're all aware on on the options. So uh, Wednesday we would post. We just need tomorrow to kind of pull all the materials together. Uh, West, Wednesday we post. Uh, we we then work on sending out uh, a notice to all families of the the change in uh, board um, and and what the process is going to be. We'd advertise. Uh, May 3rd is when the uh, due date would be. So that gives about two and a half weeks uh, for for um, any interested applicants to learn a little bit about, um, you know, what it is to be a board member and 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 uh, and, and then uh, submit their applications. Um, six or the seventh, uh, I, I'd meet with the two two board members to go through. Uh, the the um, verify residency and re- voter registration and 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 all of that necessary uh, paperwork uh, to see who's eligible. We'd notify the applicants, and then um, I would recommend that that earlier in the day on May twentieth. That's that's a, a regular meeting for for the board, but maybe um, you know at five o'clock or four thirty that we would do the interviews as part of a special meeting in here. Um, and then select, and then I'd swear the uh, the appointee in, and then that way they could participate in closed session and then the regular meeting that night. So, um, and then on on the twenty first, we would just need to to notice, and this is all Ed code. Uh, I didn't cite the specific uh, codes, but this is straight from Ed code uh, that we would notice the provisional appointment on the district website, three district locations, and local media. Uh, and then again, the June 10th date, if the vacancy isn't filled by that date, then the county superintendent uh, could call for a special election. So this is kind of the recommended um, timeline uh, based on what we saw in other districts that we've looked at that have had vacancies mid midterm uh, and also information from CSBA. Um, any other questions? So quick question. Mm-hmm. So. So that day we interview, and that that same day we're gonna pick that person. Yes. Wow. Okay. So are we gonna have any information about them prior to that? Yeah. So there's a, there's an application that we would uh, that they have to fill out, uh, just a brief questionnaire. Why you want to be a board member? Kind of, you know, what impact do you think you'd make on the on the district? Um, other kinds of committees that that they've been on uh, in terms of community involvement. So just some background information uh, so that. You as board members, and and we would we would have to that be part of the board agenda as well. Um, that that you have some some background information on on any individual who comes comes forward and and is interested in the seven month appointment. So just out of curiosity, um, is there an age requirement? Uh, you need to be eighteen and a registered voter. And that's it. That's it. And live in trustee area. And live in oh, yeah, and yeah, live yeah, in yeah. trustee area. E. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a given. I'm just asking. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just also out of curiosity. Um, <laughs> did we follow the same procedure for previous appointments in Torrance Unified? Yes. Like exact same rules as before. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I heard doc- Dr. Oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Han, you would like to volunteer? Like, yeah. Yes. Is there anyone else who'd like to volunteer? No one else would. I would. You go ahead. All right. So we'll have uh, Dr. Muhammad and Mr. Han on that committee. Great. Great. Um, so I'm assuming we're moving forward with provisional appointment. Yes. Process. Yes. Okay. Do we need to vote and make a motion on that? No. Okay. I don't, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I I sensed a sigh of relief from Dr. Yeah. Butler. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, moving on to uh, Miss Park. Do you want to uh, discuss the? Oh uh, yes, yes. Um, meetings that you're so one of the one of the uh, the ways that we hoped that we would be able to. Um, share like what it what it means to actually be a school board member and um, potentially reach folks who may not have envisioned um, 
submitting an application um, was to hold office hours. And so we we have um, three dates and times a week of April 22nd um, for folks to just hop on a quick Zoom to ask any questions to um, two of our two of the board members about what it means to be a school board member, what the time commitment looks like, what um, our day-to-day -day role looks like, what's what's you know, our favorite part of being a, student, a, a school board member. So um, with that, like there are, should I list the dates and times for It'll go out in, in the message that we mm -hmm. send out. Yeah. And so with that, um, I was hoping that the other board members could join for one, one of those um, office hours. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we could figure out the logistics of that asynchronously or should we do that now? Um. You can do it asynchronously. Just you need to not have a majority of the board at any one of those meetings. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right. So, so I was thinking maybe we could do two, two per okay. um, office hour would be good. Can, okay. Great. Great. So, so that information will be part of what we send out along with the Zoom link. Excellent. Thank you so much for accommodating that request. <laughs> um, great. All right, uh, and should I move on to 10.3 now? We're, we're good? Awesome. So 10.3, we have adopt resolution number HR 032324 of the governing board of the Torrance Unified School District in the matter of notifying certain certificated employees of the decision not to not reemploy or to reduce their hours due to a reduction of particular kinds of services pursuant to education code sections 44949 and 44955. Mr. Hernandez. Good evening again, President Park, uh, Superintendent Dr. Stowe, members of the board, uh, staff and community. So this is the last step in the layoff process for both classified and certificated. This has been presented to the board twice before. And this item now identifies the individual who will be recommended to be laid off. Uh, this position um, is the teacher who teaches uh, visually impaired. Um, there is no uh, indicated student that's coming up to elementary school for the upcoming school year. Um, what this will allow is that this employee would go into the 39-month rehire. Should the district um, need a visually impaired teacher, uh, they would be able to return back to the school district. Um, so this is the last action recommendation to uh, vote to release the employee on this layoff. Um, and we will notice then the employee before May 15th with ample time um, to be able to meet the head code. If there's any questions. Any questions? Motion to adopt. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then we have 10.4 adopt resolution number um, HR 042324 of the Governing Board of the Torrance Unified School District in the matter of notifying certain classified employees of the decision to not reemploy or to reduce their hours due to a reduction of particular kinds of services due to lack of work and or lack of funds pursuant to Education Code Section 45117. Back to you, Mr. Hernandez. Thank you. So this is a reduction. We were laying off two hours for a classified employee. Uh, the employees have been informed, the unions have been informed as well. And again, this is a last step in the process of laying off these two hours. What essentially we'll do, this employee in this position had two additional hours compared to everybody within that classification. Uh, this will now align these positions to the same amount of hours. Uh, again, this is the last action recommended by staff to the board. Uh, we will notify the board, excuse me, notify the employee after the action of the board. Okay. Are there any questions? I have a motion to adopt the resolution if there are no questions. Motion to so, adopt. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Okay. All right. Next, moving on to the consent agenda. I have from our pink cards, we have um, 12.7 and 12.10. Um, I think... There are others, and I will. I, mm -hmm. I, would, I would also like to pull 12.7, mm -hmm. 15.3, 15.6. Okay. Um, anyone else? All right. Then I would also like to pull 12.8, um, 12.9. 12 and 
Right. No, no, there's no others. Okay. Do I have a motion to adopt um, the rest of the consent agenda? Move to adopt 11.3 to 17.3, with the exception of 12.7, 12.8, 12.9, 12.10, 15.3, .3 and 15.6, and 15.4. Okay. Thank you. Can I have a second? Uh, second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Um, so the first is 12.7. We have um, Deborah Tabush. Good evening, President Park, school board members, Dr. Stowe, cabinet, and student representative. Deb Tabush, President of the Torrance Teachers Association, 1619 Cravens Avenue. I pull consent item 12-7, ratification for an agreement subscription with Thought Exchange, because I think it's important for you, the school board, to consider how and who you are collecting input, uh, input from while making the most effective decisions for TUSD. The summary states that you need to know how your various constituents feel about a variety of topics. It says all of you are interested in continuing to prioritize families, the community, and other key partners. My question before you this evening, is TUSD considering TUSD employees as the other key partners? I ask this question because many of you have heard me speak about the fundamental issues of safety at our site, low employee morale, and the lack of trust and transparency between employees with some administration and TUSD leadership. TTA remain, remains steadfast that the recruitment and retention of members is and will continue to be one of our top priorities. How do we work to solve the hard issues and concerns if there isn't a mechanism to identify the root causes of the problem? Thought exchange includes traditional surveying to ensure the district meets various needs through fast, transparent, and trustworthy engagement results in real time. Again, I ask, is TUSD considering TUSD employees as the other key partners? I believe that in order to ensure all voices are heard and considered when solving the issues and concerns within TUSD, all TUSD employees should be part of this agenda item. My essential question now becomes, will TUSD be ensuring that TUSD employees are an essential part of this process? Thank you and can, for uh, listening and making that consideration. Thank you, and that Mr. Hahn. So um, the reason I pulled this item was to talk about the thought exchange. I, I think it gives an opportunity for input. I think just so that we have an understanding, you know, whether it be the employees, whether it be the teachers, whether it be our community, our parents, our families. I, I, I was really excited about this, just so that we have another avenue to gather information Right, so a lot of times it's important for us to understand the pulse, to understand because our district is a very big district, and so often we might have our own segment. We have diff different diff districts represented here, right, with different areas, and I think that every area has a different concern or a different idea. So I think it's a good idea that we might have a, a forum or a, a an exchange where we can hear and we can address these topics again. And again, it's just information. I think it's not going to be definitive. It's just for us to get a pulse. doesn't mean that we will always agree. doesn't mean that we will see eye to eye, but it will give us more information. I think it will help us identify um, to understand, again, what people are thinking, what people are feeling about topics. So it will be helpful for us, I think, especially as a board, to gain that information. And I have to ask Dr. Stowe to explain a little bit about what Thought Exchange is, so the public can be aware of. Yes, absolutely. Um, and the reason it's a ratification is we saved 20% by signing up on a, prior to April 1st. Um, so so we did enter the agreement, which is why it's ratification. Um, we we would have brought it forward anyway and, and this at this meeting. Um, we thought that was a significant savings. Uh, so, so Dr. Butler, myself, um, uh, Sarah Myers in communications, we, we've been looking at this tool for probably two years. 
um, in fact, during COVID, uh, in the, the, the fall of 2020, I had several superintendents that recommended uh, this to gauge community input um, on, on returning to school and, and all of those kinds of things. Um, chose not to do it at that time. I, I think we had good systems in place. I, I think we we had had solid communication and and you all heard from you know our our community uh, loud and clear um, and I think our our community is, is, is uh, Mr. Bush you know asked where where is staff I I think everybody's part of this community right um, so uh, so you know everybody is is key in 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 our listening. Um, but what so so we over, over the last you know 18 months or or so really taken a deep dive into this there are a few different products out there um but we do think there are some some key things that we want to hear from from uh people about and and this is the tool uh that that would allow us to do that um we looked at at three different companies and three different products um but this one uh roughly uh 90 percent or excuse me 90 or so school districts in california use this and that's almost 10 percent of the school districts in california um we we vetted it very very thoroughly um and and i mentioned in our labor management uh coalition meeting uh, a couple weeks ago that we were looking at, at tools because employee satisfaction uh well-being that's all part of what we want to do in terms of of surveying to um we, we there are are some other issues around uh you know that that we want to make sure we address um in terms of you know mental health and and so it's going to be used for um not just parents but but our staff members as well um and then and then the broader community around around decisions that that the board has to make and so um we we are going to be um using this very strategically here over the course of the next uh, 11 and a half months and um, you know another uh, and then assessing whether or not we want to continue uh, with with a contract with this company. Um, another way that districts have have utilized thought exchange is uh, getting input for the LCAP. So I know Dr. Crumpy uh, is is looking at this as a tool as well to um, get get input from uh, the the various groups uh, that that do have a stake in the work that we do um, to see what are issues out there maybe that we're not hearing and um, then then through the tool people have an opportunity to um, to to like if you will uh, certain ideas and so the more likes those get it rises to um, you know a, a larger um, you know it, we. It, it votes up and votes down, essentially based on an idea. And I piloted it in that meeting I had with the CEOs. Um, Sarah set me up with a, a little trial, and and they loved it. Actually, one of them said, "What is this, and how do I get it for for their company?" Uh, not sure that they're going to follow through, but um, but it was it was it was very engaging for them, able to uh, to to put some ideas out there and then to to see what other people are thinking. So. Uh, we think it's going to be um, real valuable in the next in the next you know eleven months, uh, and, and obviously if individual board members or or the board as a whole, ha you know, want to brainstorm ideas of of things that we might want to talk about and and ask to ask questions, you know, that's we're we're this is a really trial phase for us. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to ratify. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, next we have 12.8, adopt a resolution proclaiming May 2024 as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Michael? First try. Mm -hmm. So as we all know, um, about one third of all students at TUSD fall under the AAPI umbrella. Um, this represents just a small part of our district and the culture of the Torrance community. Uh, it's important that we recognize the usually underrepresented hardships in the Asian American community. A monument for Japanese Americans interned during World War II will be erected in Columbia Park. Um, this represents just one of the many AAPI communities' hardships. 
And then, you know, we're looking forward to our newest ethnic studies class, um, giving insight to all of our students on um, the challenges that all of our cultures face, not just AAPI, but just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Any other comments on the board? All right. Can we have a motion to adopt resolution? So Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next, we have 12.9, adopt a resolution proclaiming May 2024 as Jewish American Heritage Month. Um, like Michael, would you like to start again? or would you? <laughs> I will start it. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, the adoption of Jewish um, American Heritage Month comes with the inevitable association with the ongoing Israel-Palestine conflict, um, which has um, expanded in the past couple of days. Um, I just wanted to uh, kind of voice my concerns, um, saying that, um, you know, there is no room for hate um, from either side. Um, and any physical, vocal, or symbolic hate towards any community um, is not welcome here at Torrance Unified, either from community members or from students. Um, respect is the greatest thing that we can give each other, and everybody deserves respect, um, no matter what side you come from. Mm, thank you for that. Any other comments from the board? Could I get a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 12.10, adopt a resolution proclaiming May 2024 as TUSD Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, I believe that Mr. Hani also pulled us. I don't no. know. It was. No, it's it's here. That's why. I'm yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, we're going to have Mr. Uh, James Henry. Would you like to come up to speak on 12.10 um, Mental Health Awareness Month? My name is James Henry, a North Torrance High School graduate, class of 1969, a North Torrance homeowner since 1976. I would like to congratulate the Torrance Unified School District for pro proclaiming May 24th as Mental Health Awareness Month. Thanks to social media and smartphones, we live in unprecedented, unprecedented times with very little human contact and interaction. This disconnect lends to issues that could affect one's mental health. Personally, I'm an old school person without a smartphone and no contact with social media. Because of this, I would like to think that I'm emotionally stable without any mental health issues. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Uh, every time you speak, I, I do the math and I realize you bought a house when you were 25. It's, it's <laughs> <wonderful>. <laughs> um, yeah, and Michael? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, I'd just like to bring up to the board that students have seen on-campus posters um, posted regarding um, mental health awareness. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was distributed by our communications department. <laughs> Um, mental health is a very serious issue. Um, I'm a big advocate for it. I've had my own experiences in it. Um, two months ago, uh, unfortunately, there was a woman who took her own life at Delamo Mall. Um, so, you know, it's a really, it's a serious issue. Um, it's a very realistic one. And there are people um, in real life, like literally our neighbors who have um, issues with their mental health. Um, and, you know, it takes a continuous effort by everyone in the community, uh, the district, um, staff, students, um, to contribute to these very preventable um, deaths and issues that we that we see pretty much more so, oh, so often. Um, you know, it's no different from a broken bone or a scraped, ankle or a scraped knee. Um, TUSD, I know, offers many resources to all of our students, such as therapists, psychologists, and other online resources. Um, of course, the new emergency number for mental health um, emergencies is 988. Just wanted to bring that out there. Um, and, you know, with school becoming such a big part of, of kids' lives, especially with so much pressure and, um, and overloading of, of, sense, of senses, um, mental health, it could become really overwhelming for a lot of students. And a lot of us still feel that, um, that, how do I say it? 
that stigma against me- mental health. And, you know, I'm glad to see that um, TUSD is taking efforts to help with, with this issue and to help normalize and um, make it equivalent to that of any physical injury that we all have, because uh, this is a very, of course, very preventable. Um, it's very, very common now. Um, and yeah, I'm just glad that we're taking steps to um, improve this issue on our campuses. Thank you. Um, any any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, uh, can I take a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. aye. Um, 15.3 was a mistake that I pulled it on my end, but um, just three three great books. Uh, if you're looking for book recommendations, I guess. <laughs> but I meant to, I meant to 15.4, but yes. Um, so I, I will make a motion. So Mr. Hunt, I think, pulled 15.3. Oh, it was you. Oh, um, I need to get a better system for figuring out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Please go ahead. Uh, the reason why I pulled 15.3 is because of the fact of the books that, that were um, suggested. Oh. Uh, they're good books, by the way. I do concur. <laughs> um, I, I think my concern here is a matter of process. Um, in California now, we're not allowed to ban books as a board. Um, and so it's interesting to me that we're asking to approve of these books, right? Because my understanding is that it's not like we can say no. Right? because we can't ban books, right? And so I want to make sure that's clear. Um, and so I think that's why I know that the resolution said that we have to adopt, but I'm not sure that adopt is, um, like, is, is that instructional or supplemental? So it, it was interesting to me that these three books came up for our approval. And so I asked, when was the last time we actually approved the books? It was 2020. And it's interesting to me that all of a sudden that um, we're asked to do this so I just wanted some clarification on this. Yeah, so um, thank you, Mr. Han, for the question. Yeah. Um, so the board's policy 6161.1 um, does state that the board shall adopt instructional materials for grades 9 through 12 upon determining that the materials meet the criteria specified law and reg in, in law and administrative regulation. And, and so it's a longer policy. Um, but this this has been the practice, uh, as it is the, the policy of the board, to adopt instructional materials um, that are that are to be used in the classroom. Um, as far as our process goes, uh, we do have an administrative regulation, 6161.1, um, that outlines uh, that, um, and that falls within the, the scope of, of ed services. And so... Um, Maybe Dr. Crumpy can can talk about just the process in general and how that um, you know how materials make it to uh, to be here uh, you know in front of the board. Thank you. And the, the January 2020, um, we're I mean we're still looking because the, the the question came um, the, the, later this afternoon. That was the last time there was an English language arts supplemental book. Um, I think there are other subsequent um, Kerr Tech Ed, you know, so all supplemental resources that that a teacher wants to use in class, um, we utilize this board policy and, at, and ask for board approval. In fact, when you look at the list, um, 1966 um, was the first book that we have on our supplemental book list. It's been going on for that long. It's a Christmas Carol, um, on, you know, on on this list. So the process when we have a core book, and we've done a lot of textbook adoptions where it's the core book in the class. But we also um, utilizing our the board policy for all instructional materials that are supplemental. That that I think um, our distinction is that we utilize them whole class. Um, it's not an individual library book that a child or student may choose, um, or sometimes there's choice in literature circle books where, where where there's a lot of choice. These are supplemental books that that a that a teacher chooses that for a specific um, standard um, uh, genre and reading um, or writing that that they want to utilize this book um, to help kids. Um, better achieve what the their essential standards that they're working on. Um, so the the, when a supplemental book comes is a, of interest of a school, um, there are three readers for the book. There's usually um, at least two um, from two different schools. And then often we have a district office um, content expert 
that also contributes. Um, the the administrators know about the book. It's part of the process um, ahead of you seeing it is that everyone knows that the book is being um, recommended for, for an adoption. Um, it when we did our last major English language arts adoption, and I think it was about six years ago, maybe seven years ago, um, the high school did not choose for to um, to use an anthology and to actually up, adopt a textbook. The high school teachers chose to use supplemental resources. So at that time, there was a major um, reworking of all of the supplemental cho cho choices because they all became um supplemental choices of, of how they were going to instruct. Um, and so this is um, uh, a, a few books moving past that. Um, and then, you know, with, with the pandemic, we're coming back out and they're realizing that there are some um, more relevant um, uh, uh, books that they want um, to utilize in their classroom. So out of curiosity, then um, these three, these not four, I'm sorry, three books, right? Mm -hmm. How many books are the part of that anthology that were uh, like approving, like not anthology, but supplemental? But this, we're, we're identifying these three books for a reason. Obviously, a school, somebody um, suggested that they wanted to use this as supplemental. So I'm wondering how many books have we approved on the reading list? I'm just kind of curious, or if you know, if you know, I'm not sure if you're going to know that. I don't want to give a, there are, there are quite a number of books on, on the list. Cause it's, it's, it's nine twelve, you know, for, for that specific list, but we actually approve TK 12, you know, for, for, for all of the books. Um, I can get that number for you. I don't have, I don't want to misspeak. I don't have that number available, but quite a number of books um, to give our teachers the choice based on um, student interest um, we know we want kids engaged in in what they're reading, and as they become interested, um, sometimes they they do a deep dive, and there's another book that sparks an interest um, that it, that a that a they can choose um, to uh, to to forego a book that they've used and go with a different book. Um, we do utilize um, there's within the the framework. Um, and the Common Core standards, there are what we consider ad ad adopted literature texts also that we do not board approve those. They've been vetted. And, and if they're on those lists, then we don't have to go through this process. So what that's just going to ask that question, because one of these books is banned by a certain state. And so because of that, I, I get I like the book, so I'm not going to that's why I disagree with what they did. But it just makes me, you know, obviously aware. Right. So we have a book that's banned by a certain state. And then we're approving, you're asking us to approve, right? Whereas here in California, we don't ban books. Do you, see, do you see what I'm saying? So it's just a question that I wanted to ask just so that we are aware, um, because obviously these are three books, but one of them, um, if, you, if you look it up, it's, it is a part of a banned book in a certain state, right? And so um, I just wanted to make sure that we were asking the question just so that we understand the process. And my, my concern was more, more than the books was really the process, mm -hmm. because again, we, we don't ban books here in California. Well, I think it's, it's a good point that, yeah. that you raise because as we're going to be implementing ethnic studies um, in, in 10th grade English, there may be more books coming forward that teachers say, you know, this is, we, we need this for this purpose and, and um, you know, or something comes forward. So for, just just to clarify what the that why we bring things why it appears on an agenda and then then there is a thorough process um you know well before it gets even considered to be on the adopted list um uh, that that um Kara Heinrich oversaw I know when when she was in in that role um I know Dr. Egan oversaw it as well when he was uh, over in in this building so um so yeah very Good question. Anyone else? Right. After that very embarrassing confusion <laughs> on my end, um, could I have a, a motion to approve 15.3? Move to approve 15.3. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. I I abstain on this one. Abstain. Okay. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. And one abstention. It's three ayes, one abstention, no nays. Um, and then 15.4, approval for Torrance Unified School District students, K-12 and chaperones to attend and compete at the 2024 Invention Convention U.S. Nationals. We heard um, about this with, during our superintendent's report. Um, does anyone else have any 
comments related to to asylum. Yeah, I just um, it's been really exciting to see the exponential growth and success of of the invention convention, and I know that. Some of the travel costs are being covered by grants and donors, um, but just pull this items in, in hopes that other community partners would also be able to show their support for our students for exercising their creativity and curiosity to in innovate and develop skills that will no doubt benefit all of us as they continue to grow um, into, into contributing members of our community. And so um, that was, and I moved so to- one, one question before yes. we move to approve. So I, I had asked, thinking we maybe we could get economies of scale because we have so many people going, what does it cost to rent a jet? And we'd charter a jet and all fly, you know, families and everybody together. Didn't quite work out. But <laughs> but if anybody in the public, you know, maybe, maybe there's there's companies out there that have corporate jets that want to partner with us, you know, we're not just in kind, uh, you know, we could, we'd love to be the beneficiary of, uh, uh, of anyone that, that's, that's got a Learjet. Love that idea. Or a DC, you know, what seven thirty seven or something. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm just wondering, Sorry. do they get a tax deduction if they? Of give course, we, <laughs> yeah. we'd issue a donation letter of thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just want to bring that out. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so I would move to approve fifteen point four. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor? I. Great. Okay. And then finally, we have 15.6 K-12 strong workforce. Um, where is it? Yes. Approval to accept the K-12 strong workforce program grant for CTE programs, Mr. Han. So I just wanted to highlight this as well. Um, it's a great thing. I think working with South um, South Bay Workforce would be a great thing. Um, so especially for our CTE to develop maybe apprenticeships, uh, partnerships, I think it'd be a huge thing. The only thing I wanted to, I noticed that one thing that was not left, it was not added to this, if we can't, is SoCal Rock, uh, field trips to SoCal Rock. Um, I know we work with SoCal, but here it says, um, field trips are used for substitutes for field trips, classified hourly pay to work on Cal Class Plus, and to support field trips to El Camino College. Um, I, I would like to see if we can somehow support SoCal Rock on that as well. If kids are interested in you know, whatever um, partnerships that we might have with SoCal Rock as well. Just wanted to highlight it, but it's a great thing. I'm so excited for this workshop partnership. Great. Would you like to move to approve 15.6? Um, yeah, motion to approve 15.6. Uh, Take a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, moving on to comments from the members of the Board of Education. We have 19.1 LAXTA, our Board of Education representative report from Mrs. Liu. You know that you're not able to attend the meetings because they are scheduled at the same time <laughs> as our board meetings. So, so, yes, we you. always appreciate your reports. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I think most um, school districts have their board meetings on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's why they choose Mondays. And, um, well, the, they have a meeting tonight. <laughs> it's a social mixer and dinner located at um, Saugus Union, Union School District in Santa Clarita. Santa Clarita is a little farther away, but they always want to make sure all parts of LA County is involved. And for tonight, they have a short presentation on overview of ethics training which is a new requirement for school trustees according to AB 2158. They have a speaker from CSBA to talk about it. His name is Aaron Davis, who's a director of membership. And, um, and that's the report for Los Angeles County School Trustees Association. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have 19.2, so Cal Rocker Board of Education Representative Report, Mr. Hahn. So one thing I wanted to highlight from the last meeting was that we rejected the increase for students. So just letting you know on that. Um, and we're going to discuss an adult increase this Thursday. That's it. Because our meeting is Thursday. Um, other comments from the board? Dr. Mohammed? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the only thing I, I wanted to mention was, uh, first of all, last last month was very busy. There were a lot of events. Um, a lot of it was covered by uh, uh, in uh, Dr. Stowe's presentation. Um, but, you know, some of the ones were like Visions of Unity I was able to attend, uh, Invention Convention, and then some of the award ceremonies. So uh, just uh, there was a lot going on since our last meeting. Um, but what I do want to highlight mm -hmm. is on behalf of uh, TEF uh, President uh, Fury, uh, he wasn't able to make it today, um, they have their annual dinner um, gala event uh, this Friday as a fundraising event, and a lot of the proceeds that are generated come right back
back to the school district here. So uh, for those of you that are interested in attending, um, they only have a few tickets remaining. They usually have a good sellout. Um, so just wanted to make sure that uh, everyone is aware about it. It's again this Friday, April 19th. It's a great event. Oh, it's a fundraising event for our school district. And you can get tickets uh, directly from the website at tef4kids.org. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, any other comments? So, uh, I, 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 you want to go, Carmen? Oh, no, you go ahead. Yeah, no, I do my normal report. It's oh. long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I make it quick. Um, so just wanted to highlight a couple of things. Um, the multicultural event in North High was amazing. Um, they did a great job. So, uh, and I was telling um, Mr. Nataki that um, it might it might have been, be been even better than had across campus, but don't tell Doctor don't tell uh, Mr. Gurgis that that it was fantastic. It was really really good. Um, just want to highlight that I really enjoyed it. Um, I also want to say I'm grateful for um, a student uh, student school member uh, Suhara Suhara for being so articulate and um, highlighting the resolutions. The reason why I didn't pull them because I wanted to talk about it in my closing session here again. Um, you did a great job. And I think you articulated the way I wanted to say it, but you did a lot like 10,000 times better than I would do it. So, um, but I really wanted to highlight the Jewish American again, what you've said, I, I concur with you completely uh, to support our Jewish American students here as well. And I kind of wanted to highlight that because of the fact that um, too bad our fellow uh, school board member, Dr. Jeremy Gerson, who is now um, the new city councilman for the city of Torrance. I know he would have been really happy to um, highlight this so in honor of him. And obviously, Jewish American Month, I want to make sure that we recognize that as well as the mental health. But thank you so much for um, doing a wonderful job of articulating that. Um, last but not least is that I um, just wanted to highlight another event that was not mentioned. This Saturday is Torrance's Relay for Life. Um, and so obviously, for those who um, have people that are dealing with cancer, who have lost people to cancer, yeah. or are fighting cancer, uh, the Relay for Life is actually this um, Saturday. And so... If you want for more information, you can always go online. I'll be participating in that. So I just wanted to bring attention to that uh, wonderful event on what people are doing. So that's going to be this Saturday. Um, so if anybody interested as well. Thank you. This is new. Yes. Um, to add on to what Dr. Muhammad was saying about the Torrance Education Foundation Gala this Friday, uh, the uh, president, um, Pat Ferry, also called me about this, and I just want to encourage everyone to go. This is, if you haven't been, it's actually one of those um, to be seen kind of events of Torrance. It's it's a big one. The city council members usually go, um, our school board members usually go, and all the um, big donors and big sponsors of Torrance go. And they also have a wonderful silent auction and live auction that that um, they have. It's really quite a fun night. So I just want to encourage everyone to go. And then um, I always do my uh, reporting for our classified employees. Uh, before I go to the celebrations um, and uh, of anniversaries, I want to mention that we have a resolution that was passed today in consent calendar proclaiming School Bus Drivers Day on April 23rd, 2024. Um, we have this every year because we want to show our appreciation to our classified employees and especially school bus drivers who, uh, let's see, whereas the safety of our children rests in the hands of trained school bus drivers and support staff for up to two or three hours each school day. So I just want to give some recognition to our school bus drivers who we trust um, our dear students too, and um, and importance that they have in the school district. So going on to my uh, normal listing of um, uh, accredited service anniversaries, we have for ten years, uh, Rosie Flores from the Fiscal Service Department, uh, Sean Hall from the Maintenance and Operations and Facilities. Rita Ganhi from Carl Elementary School, Olujima Oganmola from South High School, Juan Navarro from Carl Elementary School, Melissa Skubik from Felmi Welcome Center, uh, Welcome Enrollment Center, Amber Smith from Adams Elementary School. And we have one 20 year anniversary um, for this meeting, and it is for Sue Kirby of Arlington Elementary School. Thank you very much for your public service to our students, to our district, and um, and thank you for your loyalty in 
in being here at Torrance Unified in making us all great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just congratulate Dr. Gerson again on his election to the city council. We're really sad to let him go, but we're also delighted to now have him as a partner on the council as we um, seek to have a closer closer working relationship. Um, and with that, would also like to give another plug for the appointment for trustee area E, I'd like to encourage anyone who is eligible um, living in the area to submit an application. I think for me, it's really been a crash course in life, navigating human relationships, organizations, budgets, and prioritization. I've learned so much. And I think that there is a very strong sense of fulfillment um, that comes with the role. And so really, really hope that others who may not have necessarily imagined themselves um, uh, being on a school board or being in governance to to um, also, yeah, take a step of faith, try something new and submit an application. We'd love to get to know you. Um, and with that, I would like to adjourn in memory of former instructional assistant and teacher Beverly A. Manders and uh, West High School student Stephanie Tran, retired principal John McGee and retired teacher Joseph R. McGowan. Um, so, yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.